Hey, what's going on, everyone? Happy Thursday. It is February 23rd. I'm only 11 minutes past the time today. <laughs> oh, man. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, you know, very excited to talk about today's subject. And one of the things that God has really been putting on my heart in this season has been vision. The emphasis of vision, the the driving of vision, what it all means to people, why it's so important. And I really do think that vision is one of the things that are not talked about enough, whether it be in a company, whether it be in ministry. Um, it just doesn't seem to be something that's really emphasized. And I wonder why, because, you know, they said we have that saying, you know, you plan to fail, you fail, to, you know, you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So you know, it, it just kind of reminds me of that one verse in Proverbs uh, chapter 29, where it says, A fool speaks all that is in his mind, where there is no vision, the people perish. We got uh, Proverbs 29, 18, where there's no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Uh, it's King James Version. So, um that's really kind of what I want to communicate today. You know, we've been we've been coming on here for, you know, a little while. It's probably been about a month, you know, doing our Motivation Mondays, our Teaching Tuesdays, our Worship Wednesdays, our Q&A Thursdays, and our Freedom Fridays where we're doing prayer and intercession. And it has been a lot of fun. You know, I've been discovering a lot about what different gear works, what gear works better than others. Obviously, you could tell I just upgraded uh, upgraded our mic. It's our first condenser mic, and oh my goodness, I've been trying to find a microphone for vocals forever. And anytime I ask someone about the difference between dynamic and condenser, they always would say, "Oh, it's just a personal preference. It's just a personal preference." Condenser mics for vocals all the way. I'm telling you, such a difference in the vocal quality. Oh my goodness, I I love how it's capturing uh, the bass and you know just the clarity of my voice. It's just yeah, it's great. So anyone looking to do podcasts or anything like that, make sure you get yourself a condenser mic because it'll be one of the best investments that you ever make. So. Without further ado, obviously this is a Q&A Thursday, so the way that we do this is that you guys are able to ask any question. I'm going to talk. I got a couple of topics here lined up to, um, you know, to discuss, but if you're jumping in here and you're like, oh, what is We Shall Worship? What do they do? Uh, what's the purpose of it? Anything like that? Well, you can drop a comment right there. I got my phone right here just uh, kind of there for me to... Again, screen comments, screen people uh, watching. I can see who's jumping in, who's jumping out. So um, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop it in the comments. And I will stop talking about what I'm doing or I will rope what you're asking kind of into what it is we're already discussing. But I do have some discussion points for today that I would like to talk about kind of what is We Shall Worship. Uh, what does it mean to me? What does it mean in literal sense? What is it that it provides? What is it that we do? Uh, and if you're curious about what's going on in the background, um, that is actually our Worship Wednesday from yesterday. Um, so if you ever want to tune into our Worship Wednesdays, you can find us at 1.30, 1.30 p.m. Eastern, 1.30 p.m. Eastern <laughs> on every Wednesday. And um, yesterday's was fun. Yesterday, I believe we did, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a day we were highlighting the electric guitar and so we did Anything Is Possible uh, by Bethel Music, Holy Ground by Passion, and we did Son of Suffering uh, also by Bethel. I think it's featuring David Funk or uh, Mark Redman, uh, Matt Redman rather. And it was really, really fun. Um, you know, we're going to try to do different instrumental highlights as we do these Worship Wednesdays. And I'm just going to get excited every time we do because it's a ton of fun to do all the different instruments versus love acoustic guitar. I love singing, obviously, but I want to make sure that, you know, through these Worship Wednesdays, you're not just getting a taste of what it is that Andrew is doing, but you're seeing yourself in the drum, you know, in a drum cage. You're seeing yourself with a guitar. You're seeing yourself uh, singing and leading with an acoustic. And so I want to kind of 
generate that inspiration. So if you've ever had a desire to, to play the electric guitar, go ahead. You can go to youtube.com slash at symbol we shall worship. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, subscribe, like our old videos, share every single one of them, blow up your feed, um, <laughs> and you can actually check out our Worship Wednesday from yesterday where uh, we were, you know, doing a little bit of jamming and shredding, you know, shredding for Jesus, so, um, so yeah, what I want to go, we're going to go ahead and get started, like I said, if you're just coming in, if you're just jumping in, I, saw, I see Marcus is in here, thank you so much for joining in, Marcus, um, we're going to be talking about just the company, just what is We Shall Worship, uh, you know, again, how did it come about, why did I start it, what's my background, what are my qualifications, um, and we're going to be going over, uh, again, any questions that you guys have, so even if you see me talking, drop something in the comments, drop a, a comment, drop, the, drop a question, and I will address it. This is interaction hour. This is a time for you guys to say whatever you want. Uh, within reason, uh, ask whatever you want within reason. Um, so super, uh, just excited to, to get going here. Okay. So without further ado, what is we shall worship? So in order to talk about what is we shall worship, I want to kind of go back and give you guys a little bit background on me. Okay. So I believe I might've said this on, uh, on the mic, hello on the mic before. Um, but I actually came to Christ at a privy, pretty, you know, there's a lot of people that, that meet Christ on the way down, and there's a lot of people that meet him on the way up. I felt like I met him on the way up. Actually, Dave Ramsey kind of says this a lot. He says, I met Christ on the way up. I got to know him on the way down. And I can't really say that I've had a huge... Uh, yeah, actually, I can't. I was gonna say I didn't know if I could if I could really pinpoint like a down moment, but yeah, there definitely was. Um, I, I definitely had that same kind of experience where, you know, my low actually happened back in December 2017, January 2018. I was a senior in high school. That might be shocking to some people. But I was a senior in high school, and, uh, you know, my life was just not where I wanted it to be whatever, for whatever reason, and I kind of would attribute it to God at this point, but for whatever reason, I really wanted to know, you know, know right from wrong. I was always looking for good from bad, from evil. I was always trying to distinguish that myself. And I would always get into these debate, into these debates, uh, with people arguing about what is right, what is wrong, what is true, what is false. And it really didn't, bear much fruit. It was kind of, uh, me just, you know, pushing my opinion on people in a very, you know, uh, argumentative, but, you know, pretty solidly argumentative way. Um, you know, I, I was, I didn't just argue for the fun of it, although that was part of it, but I, I did argue because, uh, you know, I felt passionately about, about, you know, the things in this world and what is right, what is wrong. And again, kind of live this life going through the different experiences that I had, but not really knowing, you know, why I felt so terribly about them and terribly in the sense of, you know, I, I, I would go through life. I would see parents arguing. I would see siblings being divided. I would see financial hardship. I would see constant arguing and volatility in the homes. And I would look at that and I would say, that is not right. There's something not right about that. There's something we're missing. There's something that that we're not we're not grasping in this life because clearly none of these things are producing, you know, are producing the life that we want. So clearly we're getting it wrong somewhere. And so my entire life I was like that, you know, and so I I really gravitated towards adults because, you know, my friends, kids, you know, teenagers, they were always getting themselves in trouble, always speaking what they didn't want into existence. I was like, why are you speaking so negatively? Why are you speaking, you know, and, and those were the words that I would use back then, you know, positively, negatively, etc. And so, so we would actually, we would go through class and I was probably one of the most distracting kids, didn't do my homework was late on projects, you know, would wait until the last minute, but I loved being around teachers. 
So there was always this dichotomy of like, I absolutely love to learn, but I didn't, I, I, I didn't, I didn't like the way that I was learning. I loved learning. I loved, uh, I loved expanding my mind. I loved gaining knowledge, but I hated the way that it was being pushed on me and the way that it was being delivered to me. And, you know, even as, you know, I can remember all the way from eight to 12 years old, my friend Nadab actually knows this, you know, I was famous for saying, you know, that the school system was invented, you know, is a 200 year old system from the Prussian empire that was actually used to make loyal and obedient soldiers. And, 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 and the, and if you even look at the way that school is, it's Monday through Friday, seven to three. Well, if you take seven to three and you push it back two hours, what does that equal? One hour is your eight to four. Another hour is your nine to five. So that always just really did not sit right with me. And I never wanted to be someone that just followed the rules. In fact, now knowing the, now having the foundation that I do, I never wanted to be controlled. I hated, 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 and still do the idea of being controlled and have and, and being out of control either of a situation or not being able to decide something or feeling like that something's supposed to be my decision and other people are making it for me. It's very, very stressful for me. So as I'm growing up, I'm looking at everything that's happening around me and, you know, I, I had some, you know, I had a lot more freedom that I would say than my other siblings because I was the runt. I was the last one. So, you know, I was walking home from school most days, you know, or, uh, y yeah, pretty much most days, you know, two, you know, one, one hour walk, two hour walk. Um, and, and it was because I would always stay after late after school, you know, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock. I would wait so long to leave school and to, and, and to go home because the teachers and everyone that I wanted to learn from was in school. And so again, loved learning, but hated the way that we learned, you know, hated how I was supposed to, you know, be slowed down to the pace of, of the classroom. You know, I just felt like my, my learning was hindered and all the kids were being distracting and, you know, I was never able to really take the full potential of the class. It's like 20 minutes we're learning, the other 20 were fooling around. I'm like, come on, I'm here to learn, you know? And so I was weird like that. I actually liked learning. Again, I just hated the way that we learned. So fast forward, I go, you know, we're in January and I really did not have any solid relationships with family, which I was grown up in Italian household and family was supposed to be, you know, held in very, very high honored. It was supposed to be high honor. It was supposed to be appreciated. And I did not, I, I was just not in a place where I had any real good relationships with any of my siblings. All my siblings had, uh, you know, had, had left the house, um, you know, I did not have both parents in the household. And so, you know, that that really affected me without even knowing it because I, I didn't even realize that I didn't know what it was like to be a, you know, to be a man. And I didn't have anyone really to teach me. I remember, you know, my brother had to teach me how to shave. You know, before that, I was just going to, I was just letting it grow out. And then I was letting the guy at the barber shop trim it all up for me. So... You know, I, uh, you know, b being in this, being in this household, um, trying to figure things out for, for my own, you know, there was a lot of mental illusionary things going on, especially with my physical health. Like, you know, I actually was clinically diagnosed with body dysmorphia and, uh, and anxiety, you know, f four years of anxiety and depression from 14 to 19 years old. Um, there would be days when I would just sit in my bedroom and, you know, I, I would love playing guitar anywhere else, but in my bed, it was in my bedroom. It was so hard to go and pick it up. Once I picked it up, I was good. But from, for me to get from here to the guitar, it, it felt like such a fight. It, it felt like such a fight. And so, um, you know, from 14 to 19 years old, dealing with that, you know, um, finding pride in how I took care of my body. And I always had a hard time kind of getting rid of, rid of my baby fat. So, you know, I'm fasting, I'm, I'm literally down to, you know, one meal a day. I'm, you know, classic, classic anorexia type of thing. You know, I was down to one apple a day and, uh, and, and, you know, doing crazy. If I did eat large portions, you know, doing crazy measurements to make sure it was the right amount of macros, 
uh, working out five times a week, you know, uh, just again, taking a lot of pride in the way that I was, you know, um, taking care of my body and, uh, you know, was in a really toxic relationship at the time and, oh man, what else? And I was just very unhappy. I was not doing well in school. I was very just emotionally unhappy and I felt like everything that was going on in my life, I just wanted to run away from it. And I just wanted to start my own fresh life away from, you know, everything, away from everyone I knew, um, and literally just like hitchhike. And, uh, one person came into my life at that point, his name is Nadabahadi, and he came into my life and we met in a Walmart and he literally just started taking me under his wing and... Uh, just started teaching me all of these principles, you know, that, you know, uh, I, that I kind of already had a feeling for, but I didn't know why. And I didn't know if it was true. Like, again, the whole school system thing, you know, he gave me a book that taught, you know, that talked about that, that talked about how the school system was, you know, what was actually invented to make loyal and obedient soldiers. Uh, and they, and they had duplicated that process into, into making, you know, into making students and so you know he started teaching me all these things the pot you know why i always felt like so like ugh, like it actually hurt when someone would talk about something negative and i always wanted to try to have positive influences around me uh and always wanted to be a positive person and stay a positive person so i would always ask you know okay well why uh you know, why is that? Why is it that I'm so against like people talking bad about themselves? Why am I so against people, uh, you know, not, not living the right way and not doing things that promote their own health or the health of others or promote their finances or the finances of others? Why is that? And I hated corporate business. I hated business. I hated corporate America because I thought it was all dog eat dog. And I didn't want to engage in anything that was, you know, that was quote unquote dog eat dog. So um, he started teaching me, you know, all these different principles of, you know, well, the power of what you, and the, there's power in what you speak and what you speak will actually reorient your brain to focus on the things that will eventually create your outcome. So for example, if you say, you know, I, I'm fit, I'm fit, I'm a strong person, um, you know, I work out every day. I'm disciplined. I'm disciplined in my nutri in my nutrition. I'm disciplined in my workouts. Well, then your brain will actually create patterns in your mind that tells you that you are the type of person that does those things. It actually rewires and creates a synapses in your brain that create that outcome. Not that we're speaking it into existence, literally, um, like from a manifestation standpoint, but that we're speaking it into existence from a disciplinary standpoint and taking advantage of the neurology of our brain and the neuroplasticity of our, or the neuroplasticity of our brain to create, again, the outcome that we, that we desire to make ourselves the person that whose brain is oriented and attracted to the things that create the outcome that we want. So he took me under my wing and I never thought that any of the stuff was in faith, was in religion, was in the Bible. Um, and as he continued to teach me, we, he started to kind of drop more and more nuggets because he knew I was raised Roman Catholic, but we were the type of Roman Catholic where we went to church like twice a year. Um, and, and really didn't, we didn't pray. We didn't read the Bible. We didn't do any of that. We didn't do communion. Um, I would have loved free bread and grape juice, but anyway, um, <laughs> we didn't do any of that stuff. And so, um, you know, he, he would drop these little nuggets of saying, you know, uh, of like, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm a person of faith, so I'm going to give you a faith based answer and I'll give you the other answer as well. And it would kind of give me both. And I would always choose. I'm like, well, I'm Roman Catholic, you know, I'm, you know, I, I, I have, a, I have that relationship with God. I, I, I'm able to, um. You know, I'm able to conceive and to kind of mentally process what he's saying. So, um, so, so eventually he's dropping all these nuggets. He's getting me around other people who are just amazingly positive, And I don't even know that they're, you know, that they're believers. And, um, finally, when I went to this business meeting with him, they were holding a Christian service. And normally I use that time to sleep in. Uh, but he asked me, he goes, Hey, do you want to come to the service with me? And, and I was like, 
you know, why not? At very least, you know, I'll be able to get some more one-on-one -on -one time, uh, you know, with the mentors. And so I go there, and I, as soon as we entered the room, there was just something... There was something different in that room. I remember they were playing a Hillsong worship song. I don't remember what song, uh, but they were they were playing a worship song that I did not, you know, did not, could not understand the words. But again, there was just such like a a peace in the room, and so I go I go to sit down. You know, I was always an avid note taker, so I'm there with my notepad and everything, and I'm ready to take notes. I'm ready to to listen. I'm ready to uh, to absorb what they're giving me, and um, and Nadab looks at me and he goes, "No, put that down." And I'm like, he goes, "Just receive." I'm like, "Okay, this is different." So I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening, and boy, did I receive! I mean, every speaker that we saw that weekend um, coming up, come up on stage giving their testimony, talking about what it was uh, that God did for them. And, you know, seeing millionaires come up on the stage and say, if it wasn't for God, if it wasn't for Jesus, I would have nothing. I would be nothing. So, you know, after hearing all of that, it was really kind of an awakening moment because at that time, this is now, you know, this is now uh, actually one year later and I was working a ton. I was working... You know, 12 hours every Saturday with my dad. Um, I was working uh, Monday through Friday, uh, pretty much like 8.30 to 5.30, straight through the day. Would not take a lunch. Uh, would eat lunch as I worked. And then, you know, and then was building, you know, building a little side business from like 6 to 9 p.m. So you figure 3 times 6, 18 uh, you know, eight, nine hours straight through the day, probably, what was it, nine hours times five, 45, 45, 18, so that's, uh, 63, and then 12 hours with my dad on Saturday, so that was about 75 hours, plus I volunteered at the church, so I was working a lot, I was doing everything that I thought, you know, you were supposed to do, and was getting nowhere, um, oh, sorry, this was before the church, so this, uh, this would have been, uh, yeah, this would have been this would have been about 63, 65, uh, you know, 65 hours. Um, so, you know, I'm doing everything that I'm th that I think you're supposed to be doing, but I didn't have God. I didn't have Jesus. And so when I was at that service, you know, and all of these successful people who are living the lives that I wanted are saying I would have nothing without Jesus. I was like, well, maybe I'm missing this Jesus guy, you know, <laughs> And on, and they they did an altar call. I went up and responded to it, and um, you know, I didn't really understand what was going on. I was kind of always that guy where I was just like, "Hey, I'm all in," or "I'm I'm not giving it a second thought." And so you know, I got to talk to some people in the back, and um, you know, at the time, uh, the you know, someone who I loved loved very 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 dearly, um, probably the the. the person who I loved second in this world, um, was battling cancer. And, um, I really just, you know, was scared about what was going to happen to her and really was just not, you know, just didn't have the faith or, or the trust in God that everything was going to work out. So they spoke to me about that. They told me, um, you know, just ask God, you're not, you, you know, uh, I, I honestly, I don't even remember what the conversation was, to be honest, but it, you know, I, all I know is that we got back super late that night, probably like, I want to say it was probably one or two in the morning. And I remember I had work the next day and I remember I just knelt by my bed and, uh, this was after driving like eight or nine hours cause we kept getting lost. Um, Yeah, I remember it was one or one or two in the morning, and I just knelt by my bed. And I had my hands clasped like a, you know, like a little little Catholic, and uh, and I said, uh, you know, I said, God, I said, Jesus, I don't know how to do this. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even know what to say right now. Um, but I want to live differently, and if you'll teach me how, I'll follow you. 
I'll, I'll do what you say. And I was just like, and I just, I want you to be in my life. And when I said that, there was like a weight lifted off my shoulder. And I usually shorten my testimony by saying this was the point where my anxiety and depression and suicidal thoughts went away. They did not, but it felt mentally like I had, like I had the strength to fight it, if that makes sense. It didn't feel like I was at the mercy of it anymore. It felt like it was at the mercy of me. And so, um, so I was just really, you know, at, from that point, um, I started, you know, a month later, I started going to church. Um, actually, uh, uh, for, at that month, I started going to a Catholic church and, you know, kind of doing all the things, going through the motions. Um, and then my friend Nadab says, well, hey, why don't you come to my church? And I was like, okay. You know, he goes, it's a non-denominational, you know, they love, they accept everyone. And I went in there and they had a full church band. You know, it looked like a, a renovated gymnasium. And, you know, they had a band playing. There, they were, there was a kid rapping at one point in the middle of a song. I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> you know, they're, they, you know, these aren't, you know, these aren't, no offense, but these aren't a bunch of old people singing, you know, this is, there's some young people around here. There was mainly an older crowd, but everyone was excited. They were hyped. They were up and about. And I just remember falling in love with the atmosphere. And honestly, that was pretty much, that was pretty much it for me. And after a year, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, again, I'm still working super hard. I'm kind of going through, uh, you know, the motions at that point. Uh, again, this was the point where I started to work with my dad on Saturdays. Um, and, uh, there were, you know, on, on Sundays there was, um, obviously church, you know, I had events on Saturday night that I was always, always, would always try to make. And I just remember, um, again, kind of being when, when we were getting into 2020, I was kind of at the end of my rope and I was saying, Lord, you know, uh, I, I'm doing everything that I think I'm supposed to. And I don't really see the results in my life. I'm like, yeah, I, I have a new car, you know, um, that was really cool. And I really, you know, was praying to him for that. You know, I had a, a really nice paying job, you know, and was, and was, you know, it was doing decent, um, but again, you know, working super hard, not really giving him much time, picking up the Bible when I could, uh, you know, reading when I could, listening when I could, praying when I could, but really just kind of working as hard as I could. And it wasn't a new year's resolution. I don't know what kind of spurred this desire, but I was just like, I'm going to start reading the Bible every day and I'm going to start spending God, spending time with God. And at that point, I, I stopped working with my dad on Saturdays. I started resting on that day. Uh, I started to take like two to three hour breaks at work. Now, I know this was extreme. And I'd go over to a park that was nearby. And I would just walk around the vicinity. And I, and I would just, I, I would just be praying. And I would just be talking to God. Or I'd listen to, I'd be listening to an audio Bible. Or I'd be listening to worship music and singing. And... I went from not being able to meet a $15,000 a month sales goal to by the time COVID hit, having about 115,000 that was ready to close. Now I did not get to reap the benefits of all that because my company was laying people off based on seniority. And I was, I was, I was the fresh blood. I was a fresh blood. I was not over any major department like real estate or anything like that. They had brought someone in for that. Um, so uh, you know, so basically in April, uh, I found myself without a job and because I was not budgeting my money well, because I did not know how to manage my finances. I remember I had like 115 some odd dollars in my bank account and I was like, Lord, I need something to hit like Friday or I'm going to start losing stuff. And I remember that afternoon I had three, I had six deposits into my bank account. And people who had been waiting months, months. I, I remember uh, one of my friends, he said that he applied right when it opened in March for unemployment. And he didn't start seeing, and he didn't see anything until like July or August. And 
I literally had applied two weeks prior and, you know, had, had it at my, at my door, uh, had it in my bank account two weeks later. Um, so it was just kind of crazy to kind of see that happening. And I really, you know, when, when that hit, and I really felt like I had, you know, all the time back to my day when I really felt like that I had, you know, that I, all I had wanted up until that point was to, to, to be financially free. And so here I am on unemployment collecting crazy money every week. And I just basically said, I said, you know what, God, you know, you're give you gave me exactly what I want. Well, that's, that's it. You have my entire life. You have all my time. And I just started volunteering, you know, all over the place at, you know, uh, you know, my church, anytime they needed help, I kept messaging them. Hey, how can I help? Hey, how can I help? Hey, how can I help? Um, I started to double tithe. So I started to tithe 20% of my income. Um, I started to, uh, tithe my time. So I was spending about two and a half hours with God every single day, uh, praying, worshiping, um, and then, you know, there's so many details that I could go into, um, but, you know, I, you know, felt inspired by God to, to start a uh, Christian business platform, got connected to a bunch of ministries. Um, and again, up until this point, I'm still like, you know, I, I'm still kind of struggling with anxiety and depression, you know, like just in and out, you know, some days just not really feeling like doing much. And, you know, it could have been laziness for all I know, but, <laughs> and, um, got connected to a bunch of people and actually had my first started, started to really see God show up in like kind of crazy, miraculous ways, you know, would pray things and would literally get an answer like two hours to 72 hours later. You know, I was at, I would ask him, you know, Hey, you know, God, how do I know, um, you know, how do I know that, uh, that heaven is real? You know, and then got connected with a guy who was literally, you know, his testimony is that he was dead for an hour and 45 minutes and came back completely healed of his ailment. And he and he brings back with him a testimony of what heaven was like. And. Um, and I remember that, uh, you know, another question that I had was, okay, well, how do we know that Jesus is real? How do we know he walked the earth? And that's when I found the movie, the case for Christ. I was like, okay, this makes sense. So, um, helping out with my church, I'm doing all these different things. Um, and then I did have kind of a, a, a low moment relationally, um, in my family where, you know, I got, got into a really bad argument with my mom. I'll never forget that day. And, uh, and I went to go live with my brother and that was a really, really tough, that was a really tough day. Um, you know, I, I kind of felt like I was doing everything right, but, uh, everyone around me, no one, no one wanted to change. No one wanted to adjust their way of life or the way that they treated people. And it really, really bothered me. And so when I, you know, when I left, um, you know, there was, there was this feeling of, you know, the way that I reacted was not right, but I'm going to continue to pursue development and just to pursue freedom. And it was actually through the business platform that he gave me, that he gave me the idea for that. I ended up at this event in Fort Edward, New York, under this little tent next to this church, uh, pastored by a guy named pastor Derek. And, uh, actually having my first encounter with the Holy Spirit, having my first encounter with deliverance, getting filled with the spirit for the first time, speaking in tongues for the first time. Um, I mean, the experience was incredible. I mean, I was literally like, you know, hacking, uh, in the, in, in, in the road that I was in, I was freaking out. Um, I had no idea what was going on. It felt like my body was just doing whatever it wanted to. It like started as a little cough, like a, <laughs> <laughs> and then just all this stuff started to come out, um, right after it. And so, um, it was, it was kind of crazy 
because I'd never really had that tangible of an experience with God before. And I remember, uh, as people were coming over and praying for me, I remember that they were praying over my hands and my feet and they were praying over impartation of heal for healings, for healings and miracles. And literally that weekend, I remember, I think it was Sunday. Um, I went home, I'm in my brother's house. Shout out to you, Nick, Nick, Nick and Katrina Schiavo. I love you guys. Um, you know, I was chilling in the pool and his, his, uh, my brother's wife comes to the door and she's complaining about her back. And I said, Hey, what's, Hey, what's going on with your back? And she says, Oh, well, I've had scoliosis since I was 12, but one of the guys at work really messed up my back. And I said, well, let's pray. And I prayed and I remember I could feel the bones in her back moving underneath my hand and, and, and it felt like like, like literally like, like knuckles, like knuckles on the palm of my hand. Um, and then she is like, her whole back is like, like straightening and she's like white as it goes. Um, and then, you know, I told, uh, we finished praying and I said, all right, sit down, do something that would normally make it hurt. And she goes to sit down. No issues, no issues at all. I asked her the next day and she goes, Andrew, I tried to do everything to make it hurt again. And I could not. And that was really when I, when I went all in for God. And I mean, there were so many experiences that happened afterwards. I mean, you know, started, got employed by, uh, by, by, by my first, my first real church, um, you know, went on a missions trip to the West coast, did missions and outreach down in Mexico, did missionary work, excuse me, street evangelism, you name it. And when I came back to New York from that season, I had, I had previously sold everything in my room to move to the West coast, to have enough to, you know, to get me there to, um, you know, provide everything, all the finances that I needed, everything. And I remember that after selling everything and after leaving, um, you know, there were experiences out, out there that ended up happening that got me connected to my current church here in New York. And when I moved back here, you know, it was kind of like that fresh start. It was like, okay, I'm here in New York. I have a full-time job. Now, where do I go from here? And, uh, and you know, my again, awesome friends, Nadab and Eileen, you know, they were putting me up for about a hundred bucks a month so that I was able to put away money and, you know, um, kind of get, you know, supported. And at that point I was like, all right, God, well, here I am. Now, what do I do? You know, I'm not in full-time ministry. I don't have any business going. What do I do? And so I started like, I started studying for different things. I started studying for my real estate license. I started, um, trying to think of other ways to generate income on the side uh, one thing that had been prevalent ever since I was 12 years old is that I was giving music lessons. And so, uh, you know, I had a couple of students on the side that I was giving lessons to that was providing income, you know, here and there. And I didn't really give it much thought as far as like, you know, doing lessons or anything for, for income. Um, it really took a, 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 a a conversation with me and my and our our current location and global pastor pastor patrick and i said you know i'm i'm doing all these different things and he goes you know when you when you you know one of the things that i had to um do when i was coming up in business was i had to ask god i had to come to my senses and ask god what is it that i am good at what is it that he gave me what is it that he uh, provided me? What's the skill he's given me? What, what am I good at? What have I naturally done throughout all my life? And he goes, you know what? You know, I'm a systems person. I've always been good at business. I've always, that's always been my natural thing. I've always been a natural encourager. And guess what? Now I do it for a living. And I said, and I, and I, I, I don't really remember what that conversation was. Um, we ended up meeting with a good friend of his, but afterwards, after all that, I got back to my, I got back to my, uh, my bedroom and, you know, I heard, I basically heard God say, 
when are you going to stop trying to do things your way and when are you going to start trying to when are you going to start doing them my way and i knew exactly what he meant i was pursuing every other option trying to get you know get a business started i was trying to do real estate on the side i was trying to do all these different things to try to again just to try to generate an income uh generate side income and it was not working <laughs> it was not working and i knew that he was telling me, listen, you've been teaching people your entire life. You, you used to have music lessons in your music teacher's room. You used to stay after school every single day and you would teach, you, you would, you would, uh, you would teach the other students, but you wouldn't get your own work done. You know, this is something you love to do. Excuse me. You love to teach evangelism. You love to teach all these different things, how to pray. You love discipling people. So just do that. And honestly, I was like, yeah, Lord, but I'm not qualified. I don't have a music de degree. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a worship director. You know, how am I going to do this? I, you know, all I have is my skill is like, start there. So I was, uh, so I continued giving, giving guitar lessons, um, up until about January, February, I had to stop. I had to get a second job. Um, because of some financial and financial and family issues that happen, but it was always in the back of my head still, you know, in my eyes, I was like, Oh, that was a failure. But you know, it was always in the back of my head. And back in September, um, I had back in September, I had, I, 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 you know, was not teaching anyone at the time. And I just felt like God say now is the time. And throughout July and August and June, I had been developing a guitar curriculum, uh, and I thought maybe I was just supposed to teach music. And so I started giving music lessons again, uh, Saturday or, uh, September one student, October two students, November, uh, three students. But I started to see the growth where I was really starting to, you know, I think at that time I had like potentially seven you know, seven, uh, you know, seven people that have reached out to me about lessons. And so I was like, oh man, you know, this is, I didn't even know this was a need. And apparently this is a need, like, you know, apparently this is a thing. And so, um, you know, we just, we just continued to grow and we just continued to develop the curriculum, write curriculum, continue to, uh, seek ways on how we could, you know, better serve people and when I started to seeing the need increase and increase, um, not just for music lessons, but for specifically worship, that all of my students were believers, were people from church, were Christians, were believers. Um, and the stories that I was hearing of, you know, of, of, of you know, I, I, my son was taking music lessons at this music store, but, you know, but, but they won't let him learn a worship song. It was just, it was kind of crazy to me. And I was really kind of taken aback. I didn't think that, you know, musical persecution was a thing. <laughs> and so slowly but surely we, you know, I, I, I just, you know, we started out as we shall music. Then I went to the Shiavo method because we shall music seemed a little, you know, too faith based. And I was trying to make something, you know, that would capture everyone. And I've heard God say, no, 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 no. That is not your job. Your job is to make it so that you are not your job. I remember it was a Sunday morning and we were doing our pre-service huddle. And Pastor Patrick was talking about your job is not to stay in the position you're in. Your job is to replace yourself says if you're the lead of security you're you should be looking at who can replace me if you're on the worship team your job should should be who can replace me and at that moment i heard god say andrew your purpose is not to be on that platform and by platform you know he meant like you know being the one that was playing on a sunday morning he said your job is to raise up people who will take your place and that, that was really solidified for me when I attended my first worship event, my first worship concert over the summer. Um, you know, it really touched me because 
you know, when we were there, all I wanted to do was worship. All I wanted to do was be in that atmosphere of praise and dance around. I wanted to be that guy in the front row dan just dancing until his shoes fell off. I didn't want to be the one on the stage, you know, uh, the one on the stage uh, leading worship. So all of the, all of that culmination of things like, yes, we're, we're doing lessons. Excuse me. Yes, we do lessons. Uh, yes, we do. Excuse me. Yes, we do. Um, you know, yeah, yes, we do help people find instruments and yes, we do disciple and yes, we do, uh, you know, these things going live, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, but what the goal is and what the dream is, I would say, is really that we are having more worship events than secular events and we are having larger worship gatherings than secular gatherings we should be having a worship uh an annual worship event that out that out partis uh where the participation outperforms the grammys where it outperforms the presidential election how many people vote every year like worship should be the number one attraction in this country. And that's the goal of we shall worship is really like, yes, we're raising up teachers so that, um, you know, people who feel called to, to full-time worship ministry, but you know, because not every church has a million dollar budget. Um, you know, we're, we're creating a platform that allows teachers to be able to do that full time, you know, by teaching, by teaching worship, teaching a skill, teaching singing, teaching guitar, bass, drums. Um, yes, we're also imparting to students the skill of instrumentation um, and instrumentalism. Uh, but our goal has always been worship from the beginning. And I'm so excited now that we get to live that out now. Our first worship event is going to be on uh, Saturday February 25th at 6 p.m. You can go to weshallworship.com slash worship or just go to we shall worship and click the worship tab and uh, and sign up for that event if you're in the Huntington area or anywhere in Suffolk County. And uh, I have so many people. I've had up to 10 people from Canada, from Pennsylvania, from New York, from Massachusetts say, I want to, I, I want to do this. I want to... Um, you know, I want to work, I, I want to open up our house for worship. And so, uh, I, I'd like to do a call out right now and say, you know, there's one of three people that are going to come across this stream. There's going to be people who have felt called to, who feel called to worship ministry full time, but don't have a lucrative way of doing it. I want you to go to we shall worship.com and I want you to click, I want to serve right on the home page. I want you to send us our information, your information and we'll get in touch and we'll figure out how you can become a part of this movement. If you're someone who says, I've always wanted to learn guitar. I've always wanted to learn drums. I've always wanted to learn uh, an instrument that I could use to worship God, but I just, you know, haven't been able to find the right teacher or a platform, you know, I don't want to take it in a secular space, go to we shall worship.com right on the homepage, go click. I want to learn and send us your information and a teacher for the curriculum that you pick. will get in touch. And if you ever felt called to open up your home for worship, go to we shall worship.com and click. I want to serve and send us your information. We'll get in touch and figure out how soon and how we can host a worship night in your home. Um, and we use our platform, our following to do all the advertisement, the marketing, the administration, the billing, all that stuff for you. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, costs nothing to obviously host a worship event. Um, we may or may not take donations for the registration just as a, as a love offering, um, for the people that do choose to open up their homes as one hand washes the other. And, uh, but yeah, please go to we shall worship .com. If you feel like the, there are any areas of this ministry that you feel called to serve, to serve in or receive from. So that's it for today. I know we really didn't get into, you know, the meat of what we shall worship is, um, you know, we could do that again more so where we just spend all of our time kind of going over that. Uh, I'll actually just kind of, um, you know, this, I feel like was more like, how did we become, uh, you know, 
how, how do we how do we star what's my testimony um but uh we'll be talking more about the company next time and this is our last q a thursday uh for the month of february and in march our new topic is going to be identity identity so this month's topic was all about worship next month's topic is going to be teaching and the discovery of identity so um so so make sure you put that in your calendar uh we're going to be still we're going to have our motivation monday our teaching tuesday our worship wednesday our q a thursday and our freedom friday all at 1 30 p.m eastern um and super just excited to uh get to again dive into this new topic um, so February 28th will be our last posting on worship if we have one for the Teaching Tuesday. Um, and again, you can follow us on any platform, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, uh, and, and at our website, weshallworship.com. Thank you guys all for tuning in today. I hope this was a blessing. Uh, please share this broadcast, like it, post it to your story so that the word gets out that we are doing these uh, again, thank you so much for tuning in. If there's a better time that you think we should be doing at the, doing this at that will reach more people through, it's kind of difficult to do it any later because, um, you know, that, that then comes into a time when kids are coming out of school and everything. Um, but if there is a better time that you think we should do, please, uh, again, message us on any platform. We're open to improvement. We're open to feedback. We're open to anything that's going to allow us to grow and to, and to reach more people. Again, if you have a desire to learn an instrument, to teach uh, an instrument, including vocals, or to open up your house for worship, go to weshallworship.com. And at the homepage, you can click, I want to serve or I want to learn. And uh, you can submit your information there. So uh, I'm going to pray us out. And uh, again, you can join us tomorrow for our Freedom Friday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern, where we'll be interceding, taking prayer requests, uh, and just be praying for... Um, for whatever God puts on our heart to pray for, honestly. Um, so, Father, I just thank you, God, that every single person that tunes into this into this live stream is going to be blessed in some way. I thank you, God, that you are not a, ven a vending machine where you desire something transactional. I thank you, God, that you desire relationship. And I thank you, Lord, that you birthed every single one of us, that before we were in our mother's womb, you knew us. And God, I thank you, Lord, that the amount of thoughts that you have for us I thank you, God, that they outnumber the grains of sand in the ocean. And Lord, if there's anyone here, anyone that's saying, you know, I have a business idea, I have a ministry idea, but I don't know where to get started. I need millions of dollars for cameras and this and curriculum and all that. I just hear God speaking to you right now saying, start with what you have. 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 When God, when God was helping Moses deliver the Israelites out of Egypt, he asked, what is in your hand? He didn't send him to go get the staff. He said, what is in your hand? And it was that demonstration of, God, uh, of God's power that was one of the first initiations of him moving in the land of Egypt that allowed, that led to the Israelites being delivered. So God, I thank you, Lord, that whoever's got this business idea, this ministry idea, whatever they feel called to do, that they would just start with what they have, whether the, the quality of the video is 240 um, pixels or whether it's, you know, uh, 4K, um, 60, you know, 60 frames per second. I thank you, God, that they would start with what they have and that they would just be blessed beyond belief. In Jesus' name, amen.